We are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sexy Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> wow, hold on. How long have you been holding that in? I just came to me, actually. I'm just like, <laughs> S word, S word, sexy, <laughs> done. <laughs> today, Jill, when Jill is done horsing around, today Jill and I talk about what your father never uh, told you about land investing. This title I wrote, if you can't tell. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. And if you're already a member, join us on Discord. Jeff wrote, hey, all. I'm sure this has been answered before, but if you have two comparable info lots across the street from one another, with the only obvious difference being that one is cleared and the other is wooded, is there typically a difference in value? In this case, the cleared lot last year sold for $65,000. Just wondering if it's an apples to apples comparison. This is a fantastic mm-hmm. uh, question, a reality based question, and an academic question. So, if you ask an economist this, you know, if you don't, if you're not an economist and you're not an accountant, you would never know that economists hate accountants and accountants hate economists. Accountants say to economists, get in reality. Yeah, great. You sit in your office all day and come up with these concepts. When in reality, I'm an accountant. I'm in there in the field and we're looking at stuff and you know, how to make or lose money. This, this is an academic question. Like an accountant would say this. The, the price difference. I'm sorry, an economist would say this. At the price difference is how much it costs to clear the, the lot. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. An accountant would say, no, you're an idiot. It's whatever the market demands. There, there could be some re- value in wood, a wooded lot because you're just right. going to cre- clear a little part of it to build a house. So there's your academic answer and there's your reality answer. I personally probably price them the same. Would you? It's the funniest thing too. I'm like, I, I have to say too, it depends, Jeff. So when you say info lot, now I'm thinking house lots are not that big. If we were talking 20 or so acres, I'd want the wooded one. Yeah. I think the wooded one would be more valuable yep. than the than the barren one kind of thing. It's usually that's how that goes because you have a lot of options at that point. So, uh, and I I totally agree with you. In So in this situation, um, yeah, I would just be pricing it based on per acre average in the area. But my gut tells me that for a buyer coming in, having a cleared lot, if it's a, again, it's, I'm going to put a house there. It's somebody did the work. It's like someone poured a pad, you know, even if it's not exactly what you want to build your house, somebody started construction and then they walked away, but they put in some of the infrastructure and poured a pad. That's worth something. All true. It's, it's interesting. You asked this now because the property that Jill and I are buying, we really look at this. We yeah. look at, because we're improving the property to resell it. And we, we look at the cost of how much it's going to get that pro- property graded correctly right. uh, and all of that. And that stuff's not insignificant. It can be uh, expensive. But I'll tell you, if two people drive their car up to a property and they see a barren lot, or if they see with one with beautiful trees on it, guess which one they're going to choose? Then you have that. Beautiful trees. There you go. Exactly. And they can decide where they want to put the house and position it and what trees they want to keep. Yep. So there's value there. Today's topic, what your father never told you about land investing. This is why you're listening. Maybe it's why you're listening. Maybe you just want to listen to Jill like I do. Oh. (laughs) Please tell us. Please, Dad. When I was a little kid. I'm like, I'm sitting here like ready to go. <laughs> like if I should have hot cocoa or something. <laughs> when I was very, very, very young, probably before school age, my dad bought a farm in rural, uh, in a suburb of Detroit. And we lived in an urban area in urban Detroit. And we went and looked at the farm and he, my sister and I, my sister's really young. And he explained the whole thing to us. I remember it like it was yesterday. I have no idea why. I don't know why I remember this more than other stuff. Who knows why that happens? He bought it for about $28,000 and sold it, I think, for 78 or so. I think 79,000. So he made made 50 grand. 
And he sat us down and said, this is, it takes me like two or three years in my accounting. My dad was an account, a tax accountant, two or three years in my job to make this amount of money. And I guess that that's just where this started for me. Mm -hmm. So I was real lucky to have some type of working example, uh, you know, and I remember thinking, well, why don't we buy all the land? If, the, if yeah. <laughs> there's a farm over there, there's a farm over there, let's buy all this. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to work at all. Yeah. And I remember my dad really laughing about that. He's like, okay, let's go buy it all. I don't, I don't, and I don't remember what happened after that. Some version of it. I don't know. But you need a working example. That's what Land Academy is. We are a working example of what's possible. If we're doing our job correctly, that's how we're teaching by example. We're not just saying, calculate all this data. We're showing you how to do it step by step by step. We're not saying there's this data out there and it's a mystery and go figure it out and like it's some Harvard uh, law class. Right. This is like, this is how you do it and this is why. And we've done it 16,000 times before. And here's how to do it correctly and here's how not to do it. And here's how to take the risk out of it for the most part. That's what your father never told you, probably. You know, and my dad never went into the details of any of this stuff either. He's probably shocked, just as shocked as we all were that he made that kind of money. Here's what else my dad never told me. Don't get married when you're young. They're going to screw up your land investing career. Don't have children when you're too young. That'll screw it up too. And all this stuff is there. Time sucks. You know, I they, never had these discussions. Man, I, I did. wish. Well, I didn't. Yeah, my dad never talked about this stuff ever. So it's not so much about land investing, this topic. It is about wrecking your life in other ways so that you can't go have the time oh. or the money to go land invest. Oh. We all know that land investing works. If you don't know that land investing, the way that we do it works, yeah. you need to find another podcast. You know, <laughs> I'm really serious. <laughs> We're not here. I'm not here to sell you anything. Yeah. And neither is Joe. We're here to talk, celebrate and talk about success and how to get, how to do it. Yeah. Not whether or not it's true. Right. There's a lot of places on the internet you can go watch idiots with Ferraris and they'll tell you yeah. all about how to get rich when by the time you're 21. That's not what this is. What's with that stupid money machine? Have you seen that machine? That's, yeah. that's I think that's the dumbest thing. Yeah. Kind of makes when I see that, I tune out, by the way. Yeah, me too. It's like when I see someone on the hood of a car with that money machine, yeah. like, nope, and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> you are not my people. <laughs> but all if right, I so see you with a cool camper, yeah, out somewhere enjoying your land. Okay, now you're my people. I agree. <laughs> or if I see you in, sitting in front of a pretty cool computer with Excel. Oh yeah. And music in the background. I'm going to listen to that. Yeah. Watch that too. I I appreciate that too. <laughs> what did your you and your dad talk about? You know, it's interesting. Um, it was the the only discussion that was anything like this was my dad saying, just telling me to think about how hard I wanted to work in life, and really think about how much money I wanted to make. Did I do that? No, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're here now. I am here now. <laughs> at the time, I'm like, oh, whatever. So all I could think about at the time was what was the most fun job? That's where my head was at the time. And what's funny is I've landed into a career now that I do find this fun. I was talking to my girlfriends last night and, you know, they're like, do you have to work tomorrow? I'm like, you know what? Let's just, I'm like, you know what? I don't have to work any day if I don't want to. I really don't. Is this work for you right now? Just for me? No. Me, I no, me too. No, so no, this no it's not. No. I'm choosing every day I wake up choosing to do what I want because I love this stupid thing. And I was explaining to my friends, I was like, look, here's the deal. I don't have to work tomorrow. I don't have to call anybody if I don't want to. I got people that can do this. I love to do this. I'm a deal junkie. And I get my and my friends like, I get it. It's like a high for you. I'm like, it's totally a yeah. high for me. You know, there's a lots of things about this business. I'm like, eh, another lot of people run, but the deal part of it. The real core dealing with the sellers and dealing with the buyers, I, that's the part I love. And I didn't get to talk about tomorrow on the show. But um, but my dad, uh, that was kind of it. And the only thing I remember my dad trying to uh, empower me was, and both my brother and I, he sat us down and said, you know, think about what you want because I'm here to tell you anything's possible. Who would have thought this this you know, guy from Grand Rapids, Michigan could grow up to be my dream job, which his dream job was a pilot. 
and and do fantastic in that career, you know, retire off an MD-11 and then go on to NetJets and have a great time and fly around all the movie stars that he always, you know, you know, when he met Ron Howard, I, I can't even imagine what that was like for him, mm-hmm. you know, flying him around. And I'm like, this is the greatest thing. That, that was his dream. And his other thing was, and I also wanted a job that um, it was his hobby. His hobby was his career. And he, and he said, I want to have something where I could work very few hours and make a lot of money. <laughs> 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 and he got that too. <laughs> so that was our only thing. There's an underlying theme in my entire childhood throughout my whole extended family, immediate to extended family, that suffering is appropriate. And then you need to suffer to get what you want. And I'm here to tell you that's ridiculous. Yeah. It is a Midwest myth that spreads like, I don't know what. My we dad were never owned taught a, that, thank goodness. <laughs> and we don't teach our kids that either. We no. teach our kids to have fun, work hard, but have some fun. Yeah. My dad had a duplex. He got it. My dad had a tax practice. So very often, my uh, the his clients, especially his business clients, couldn't pay him. They didn't have the cash mm-hmm. to pay him for doing taxes and their books and the whole thing. So my dad would show up with the weirdest stuff. Like we got a pinball machine one time. <laughs> <laughs> so he ended up in a, in a partnership. That's, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> he ended up in a partnership with this little yeah. duplex in a pretty bad part of town. And whoever his partners were, they didn't do anything. They didn't collect the rent. And so I remember he got a phone call one day on the weekend. And if you know what wet plaster is, it's the opposite of drywall. So back in the day, there's these wood slats behind the wall. And somebody would go in instead of before drywall was a thing would wet plaster it. So the effect was the same. Uh, The Mm -hmm. wall looks the same, but it's wet plaster. So my dad got a phone call that the ceiling of one of the sides of the duplex, the wet plaster just fell down in in the entire place (laughs) on their heads, on the tenant's heads. Oh my God. That was the day my dad said, I will never be a landlord again. And he (laughs) sold his, I don't know how he got out of it, but he got out of it. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And that stuck with me because Jill and I are terrible landlords. Every time we get his rental property or we're or great landlords. And, we're good landlords, but we hate it. Like because we we like we just, charge too little. <laughs> we just don't like. I don't want to get five hundred dollars a month when I know. I know I can sell the thing and make well, five five hundred. Yeah. Or fifty or eighty. Like if you really do the math on renting. It's silly, especially when you have new deals coming in every day like this. Oh, renting to make a little bit of money every month. Yeah. yeah. The math doesn't work for me. You know, if you're going to buy a class A apartment building, raise a rent and sell it for, you know, $12 million more, I get that. That's who we are. It's a, yeah, that's, that's a necessary, renting is a necessary step to get to exit. Yeah. Then I get it. But just renting to collect the money every month. But this is stuff your father never told you. Well, you know what I think it Rent, is? Renting a house out, buying a house and renting it out is maybe the dumbest real estate investment you could possibly make. This is coming from the man who said, who wrote this beautiful blog how many years ago, which is true about these rental homes that could feed a family. Yeah. You know what it is? We're, we're, we, I think we've become more instant gratification people. You and I? Yeah. I think I'm just going to be, with I'm going to be devil's advocate here. I don't think there's anything wrong with the long haul. Should you choose to go that path there? That's slow, methodical. You know, I'm making more money or paying down the asset, whatever it is. So or I've already paid for the asset. I'm just going to sit back and collect it. Some people like that. I don't think renting stuff out and making money is necessarily bad. Okay. I think renting out a freestanding house is silly. Get an apartment building. Get a trailer park. Oh, like having Create, one? Yeah. What if you have 20, though? It's still a freestanding structure with, with a ton of stuff that can go wrong versus a 20-unit apartment building where there's one roof and it's in a maintenance schedule and, and uh, there's always, well, a, I understand you know, that. unless you're in California, I there's a great, that. that's a very liquid asset. Right. I get it. And even then, wouldn't you rather have 20, a 20 unit trailer park where you're just collecting pad rent? So and it's, they, oh, so it's not just much being rent and a yeah, landlord. It's, it's the, houses. It's the product type. Houses suck, okay. period. Now I know If you're going to make money on a house, this is how you do it. Okay. And this is what House Academy is. You buy it. A house really cheap, way cheaper right. than it's worth. And then you stick a sign in front of it and sell it. You never go in. Right. And let the next guy come along and, you know, clean it HGTV up and it. deal with the ceiling and deal with whatever mm-hmm. problems and the cracks or whatever they find. And they love it. They're still happy because mm-hmm. they they bought it right too. Yeah. I get it. 
Happy you could join us today, five days a week, and find us right here on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show is called Joe Friday and her take on relationships. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I'm going to stop you right there. It's not a dating thing. It sounds like... I think it should be. Oh, you want to talk there's about that? There's social relationships oh. and there's partnership relationships oh. and there's relationships with your children. There's all kinds of relationships. That's Jill's not where a, I was going with Jill's that. Jill's a relationship expert. I'm here to tell you. I'm, oh, I mean it. You are. Thank it's you. It's a compliment. Thank you very much. You can, well, well, I'll talk about some stuff and then you can ask me some questions or take it however you want it to go. Do you need to send out a few thousand offers to property owners like we do? Check out offers2owners.com. It's offers and the number two owners.com. No setup fees, free mail merge, and exceptional service. That's for sure. We should know because it's our company. <laughs> Give offers to owners a call today. We, we are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows.